All right, so I apologize about getting this uh, video out a little bit late, uh, but uh, this is going to be the solutions to the work energy theorem homework that I assigned on Wednesday that was due on Friday. So the first part that we want to do is we want to start from the definition of work, and we want to derive the work energy theorem. Okay, So in order to do that, what we're going to do is, uh, okay, I don't know what happened there, but uh, that's okay. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to start by writing down the definition of work. So the work is going to be equal to the integral from r vector 1 to r vector 2 of f vector dot dr. Now, we can extend this because, as written, the definition of work only talks about what the work is done by a single force. But when we're talking about the work energy theorem, we're talking about the work done by all forces. And so this kind of brings us into Newton's second law. And so what Newton's second law says is that the network or sorry, the uh, net force, which is uh, what we define to be the sum of the forces, is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. So if we want to find what the net work is, we say that we have the net work is going to be equal to the integral from r vector 1 to r vector 2 of the net force dot dr. But we see from Newton's second law that the net force is just going to be the mass times acceleration, and so this is going to be equal to the integral from r vector 1 to r vector 2 of the mass times the acceleration dotted with dr. Now, as some simplification, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that all the motion occurs in one dimension because I don't want to get too much into the vector calculus. Um, but this does work, actually, in general. And so what that's to say is that a vector dot dr vector is just going to be a, the magnitude of a times dr. And so here, this says that this is going to be equal to the integral from r vector 1 to r vector 2 of a we have an m, a, dr. Now, we know from our definitions from kinematics that a is going to be dv dt. And so let's take that and plug that in here. So it says that this is going to be the integral m dv dt times dr from r1 to r2. Okay. Now, we can apply a chain rule here. And alternatively, a, a way to think about this is that um, I'm going to take this term that I have right here. And I'm going to move the dt from uh, being underneath the dv to underneath the dr. And so that's to say that this is going to be dv times dr dt. Right? So I just move the dt underneath the dr instead. Um, mathematicians would not enjoy that because uh, it's not a rigorous proof. Really what you're doing is the chain rule here. But uh, for our purposes, this is going to work. And so this says that um, we have the integral m dr dt times dv from r vector 1 to r vector 2. And really, this dr dt that I have here is really just v. And so this is the same thing as the integral from r vector 1 to r vector 2 of m v dv. When we do this integral, we're going to say that this is going to be 1 half m v squared evaluated from r vector 1 to r vector 2. And we have to be careful because I'm not plugging in um, r vector 1 and r vector 2 into the velocity, what I'm doing is I'm saying I'm evaluating the velocity at this position and at this position. And so this is to say that this is going to be equal to 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared, where I'm defining v1 to be the velocity uh, function evaluated at this position r1. Okay? So it's a velocity at that place. I'm, I'm giving it the subscript v1. And so what this says, ultimately, and here is our work energy theorem, is that the network is going to be equal to the integral from r vector 1 to r vector 2 of f net dot dr. And so that's going to be equal to this. Or alternatively, this portion right here is what we call the kinetic energy. This is our, uh, what's going on? Um, this is uh, what we call the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is uh, funny things happening here. OK, so the kinetic energy, we say, is 1 half mv squared. And so this is the change in kinetic energy. So this is the change in kinetic energy. So delta k. And so another way that you can write the work energy theorem in uh, more of a conceptual way is that the total work or the net work done on some object or some system is going to be uh, equal to the change in kinetic energy of that object or system. So we have, here's one way that we write the work energy theorem. And here's the more 
formal mathematical way that we write the work energy theorem. Okay? So that's going to be it for this portion. But now we, what we want to do is we want to move on to solving a problem. So I'm going to rearrange some stuff and I'm going to be back in just a second. Okay, so now we're on to part two. So let's uh, look at what part two is. So part two, we have this block of mass m that's being pushed at some angle of theta as shown in the picture here with some applied force, some constant applied force Fa. And it's going to be moving across the table. Assume initially that there's no friction, then the block starts from rest. Uh, make sure that you're showing your thought process through these calculations and are not just uh, using equations from the equation sheet. Um, this problem is basically a proof of the equivalency between um, uh, two approaches uh, to the physics. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to draw this free body diagram. So draw this free body diagram for this situation. We have uh, here, we have our normal force. We have the force of gravity. We have our applied force, F sub A, and it's at this angle of theta, okay? So that's part A. Uh, initially, we're assuming there's no, uh, there's no uh, force of uh, friction here. So uh, that's all that we have. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to apply Newton's second law to find the velocity of the block after it's gone to distance d. So part B, this is kind of like the long way to do this. So for part B, we're applying Newton's second law. So the sum of the forces is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Now, the first part of this, actually, in applying Newton's second law is actually very helpful for um, when we're applying the work energy theorem anyway, because what we're going to be doing when we're applying the work energy theorem is uh, we're going to be uh, interested in what the sum of the forces is in a particular direction. Okay? So we sum that force, those forces in a particular direction that lends itself to Newton's second law and uh, the free body diagram, and we can use that in our work energy theorem. So as I'm doing this, you're going to see exactly what I mean. So some of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to max, which in this case is going to be our applied force, f sub a, times the sine of the angle that I have here. The sum of the forces in the y direction, this is really unfortunate, my camera so it keeps, uh, keeps freezing, so I have to uh, fix that uh, occasionally. So. Uh, I'm just going to leave that right here so I can do that really quickly if I need to. So uh, then we want to do our sum of the forces in the y direction. So this is going to be equal to MAY in this case uh, because the acceleration in the y direction is zero. Uh, this is going to be zero, which is going to be equal to N minus FA times cosine of theta uh, minus MG. Okay. So ultimately the thing that we can take away from this is that the normal force is going to be equal to the applied force times the cosine of the angle uh, plus mg. Okay? That's something that we're going to use for later, and this is, like I said, uh, why even if you're not applying kinematics, it's always helpful to start with Newton's second law uh, here. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to find uh, how long it takes to go this distance of d. In order to do that, now is when we're really going to be applying our kinematics. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation that I have here the mass times accel acceleration in x is equal to Fa times sine of theta. Solve for the acceleration. A sub x is going to be equal to Fa divided by m times sine of theta. Okay. Now, from our kinematics, I'm not going to go through the entire derivation here, but we see that uh, the velocity in the x direction is going to be equal to Fa over m times t times sine of theta in the event that we don't have um, uh, initial velocity. It starts from rest, so that's uh, the situation we have here. Let's make this a function of time. In principle, that's a function of time. And uh, our position as a function of uh, time is going to be equal to Fa over m times t squared, so 1 half sine of theta, plus uh, nothing again. Uh, we're assuming that we're starting from rest uh, and that uh, the position that we start at is going to be 0. So we want to find the amount of time that it takes to go this distance d. Okay. And so in order to do that, what we can do is we can take our position function and say, okay, well, at some very specific time, x of t is equal to t star. This is going to be uh, equal to the distance d, right? So t star is the amount of time that it takes to get to the distance d. And I'm saying that this is a very special time, which is why I'm calling it a t star. And this is going to be equal to 1 half uh, f a over m t star squared times sine of theta. We can solve for t star. There's a little bit of algebra here. So I'm, I know I'm doing this quickly, but uh, make sure that you can show the steps that I'm, I'm doing here. 
because it is important. So uh, this is going to be uh, 2D, uh, 2dm divided by fa times sine of theta to the 1 half. And uh, we'll check our units here really quickly. We have a Newton in the denominator. We have um, a distance times uh, mass in the numerator. So the distance times mass is going to cancel from the uh, uh, kilogram meters per second uh, squared. The second squared is the denominator. That's going to flip. And then it's raised to the 1 half. So dimensionally, this is correct. OK. So that's the time that it takes to do this. But then we want to find what the velocity is when we get there. And so in order to find that velocity, we say velocity as a function of x evaluated at this t star is going to be equal to f a over m times t star times sine of theta. This is going to be equal to f a over m times sine of theta times 2 d m divided by f a sine of theta to the 1 half. And just to simplify this a little bit, um, effectively what I'm going to have here, and again, show the algebra yourself. This is going to be uh, two, uh, 2 times d times um, m uh, times m. Uh, the m is going to flip. So this is going to be uh, 2 d f a sine of theta divided by m to the 1 half. And again, I can check the units here. So um, uh, FA is going to be units of newtons, that's kilogram meters per second squared. That I'm multiplying that by a distance, so that's kilogram meters squared per second squared. I'm canceling a factor of mass, and then I'm raising that to the one half. So this is going to be meters squared per second squared to the one half, which is going to be units of uh, meters per second. Okay. Like I said, I know I'm going quickly through this, but uh, this is not the point that I'm getting at. This is just, there's just algebra in here that's um, uh, in the end, for our purposes for this particular problem, is not uh, very important. Okay, so uh, this is the answer that, that I have, and this is what I'm going to be comparing to when I use the um, the uh, work energy theorem. Okay, so that's going to be part B. But now what we want to do is we want to do part C. So for part C, what we're going to do so this is going to be two C, two C. Now we want to apply our work energy theorem. So this says that the network going to be equal to change in kinetic energy, which says that the integral from r vector 1 to r vector 2 of the total force, or the net force, dot the path element, is going to be equal to 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. Okay. Now, it turns out that when I'm thinking about the total force, because of the path that I have, the path that I have, this dr, is going to be x hat dx, right? Because this goes along the x direction. It doesn't go along the y direction. So really, all I want here are the forces that are in the x direction. And wouldn't you know it, when I look up here and uh, compare to what we had for Newton's second law, that's exactly what this is. And so what I can do now, damn, this, uh, this camera is uh, being rather irritating. Uh, so now what I can do is I can take that force, which is just going to be the f, f sub a sine of theta in the x hat direction, dotted with x hat dx evaluated from, where do I start? I start from 0. Where do I go? I go up to d. Um, this is going to, this dot product is going to give me 1. x hat dot x hat is 1. And then this is going to be equal to 1 half m v 2 squared minus 1 half m v 1 squared. v 1, the initial velocity is 0. I start from, ra from rest. And so that says that this term is 0. Okay. So now let's do this integral. The integral happens to be simple here. This is going to be fa times d times sine of theta is going to be equal to 1 half mv2 squared. Now, in order to evaluate this and find what v2 is, I just multiply both sides by uh, 2 over m and take a square root. And so this says that v2, or the velocity when it gets to that distance d, is going to be, damn, this camera, man. It's always something. It's always something. V2 is going to be equal to, V2 is going to be equal to 2 over m times fa times d times sine of theta to the 1 half power. Okay? And now you can see why I rearranged this the way that I did for the, for the previous part to, to take it from this form to this form. It's so that I can more easily compare the answers that I have here. And so 
when I look at this, I end up seeing that I get exactly the same answer regardless of which approach I use. Okay? So that's going to be 2C. And you can see that 2C is, even, even though like, I flew through 2B and I didn't, I explained a lot when I was talking about it, but I didn't write everything down, uh, you can still see that uh, 2B is much longer than 2C is. 2C is really simple and straightforward. And that's part of the reason why we want to use the work energy theorem when we can, because it's much easier to work with. And also, ultimately, you'll see in the coming assignment, the one that um, I posted this morning, uh, you can't really do problems with kinematics that you can do with work energy theorem in certain cases, unless if you're going to solve differential equations, and we're not even going to worry about trying to do that. OK, so now let's uh, look at how we're going to do 2D. So 2D. Now it says, well, let's turn friction on. Let's turn friction on. So we're going to have friction in here as well. OK. So now when we're doing this, now when we're doing this, let me draw the free body diagram again. So here's our free body diagram. We have our normal force. We have gravity, mg. We have a force that we're applying here at uh, this angle of theta. And now we have friction opposing this motion. So Going back to Newton's second law, we say that the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to F A times sine of theta minus the force of friction. And then the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be equal to, uh, this is going to be equal to N minus mg minus F A times cosine of theta. And so from the sum of forces in the y direction, we know that this is going to be 0. It doesn't move up or down here. Uh, this is going to tell us that the normal force is going to be equal to mg plus fa times cosine of theta. Now, this force of friction that we have here, uh, because this is in motion, we're going to say that it's the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So we can take this and we can plug this in here. This gives us fx, or the total, the sum of the forces in the x direction, is going to be equal to fa times sine of theta minus mu times mg. Uh, plus Fa times cosine of theta, okay? So now, now what we're going to do, and I'm going to factor this a little bit just to collect some terms. Um, actually, it's, it's fine the way that it is. It's fine the way that it is. So now what we're going to do is just apply work energy theorem again. So the integral of R vector 1 to R vector 2 of F vector dot dr is going to be equal to 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared, okay? So here, this f net, sorry, I left off my subscript, f net, we could, we could actually expand this out a little bit differently. And we can say, OK, well, f net is going to be equal to this sum of forces in the x direction that I have times x hat plus the sum of the forces in the y direction times y hat. This is just another way to represent the same idea. And then uh, this dr, this dr that I have, remember the path, it's just going to be the x hat dx. So I can take this dot product here. I can do integral r vector 1 to r vector 2 of uh, this is going to be uh, sum of forces x, x hat, plus sum of forces y, y hat, dotted with our path x hat dx. x hat dot x hat is equal to 1. x hat dot y hat is equal to 0. That says that when I take this dot product, sum of forces in the y direction is 0. But we could, we could have said that another way because we know that it's not accelerating at all in the y direction. We don't care what's happening in y. We only care what's happening in x. So then, uh, moving to the next part, we're integrating. Where do we start? We start at 0. Where are we going up to? We're going to the distance d. Uh, and then I can plug in my sum of forces in the x direction here, which I found in the previous line. This is going to be f a sine of theta minus mu times mg plus f a times cosine of theta dx is equal to the change in kinetic energy, 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. V v1 is going to be 0. We're starting from rest. Do the integral. So when we do this integral, we're going to have f a d times sine of theta minus mu mg d minus f a times d times cosine of theta uh, is going to be equal to 1 half mv2 squared. And then we just do a little bit of algebra to, to rearrange this. And so what we end up seeing is that um, 
m, or sorry, uh, v2 is going to be equal to 2 over m times, and I'm going to group my terms a little bit differently here now. So this is going to be, um, I could, if I really wanted to, I could factor a d on the outside. So let's actually do that. So we have a d times a f a times a sine of theta uh, minus uh, mu, I lost a mu here, minus mu times cosine of theta, okay, uh, plus or minus uh, uh, mu times uh, mg. And then we can close that and close the whole thing. And then this is raised to the one half power, okay. And so there's a litany of ways that we could, uh, and actually if I really want to express this a little bit better, what I would do is this. So um, I don't need this bracket here. I can get rid of that bracket. I can put the D right here. So this becomes a D. And let me just rewrite the whole thing here just so it's a little bit cleaner. So, so we factor that D out here. We have, uh, now this is going to be um, an F uh, A times cosine of theta, or sorry, times a sine of theta minus mu cos theta. And now we can put bracket here. So this is going to be uh, minus mu m g. And then we close that bracket, close that one, raise that to the half. Okay, so that's our answer. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm trying to keep these a little bit more brief and to the point um, as I'm moving forward now. And hopefully my camera decides to uh, agree with me and behave. Um, but that's going to be it. So if you have any questions, uh, post them on Teams. The next assignment is going to be really similar to this, only instead of having this force that's applied FA be a constant, it's going to be uh, varying with distance. And we're going to see, actually, the way that I've been developing the, the way that you solve these problems in terms of these integrals may have seemed like overkill because everything was a constant. You can just say that it's the force times the distance. But that's not true in general. And that's why I've been building this up the way that I have. Because now that when we're, when we're getting to forces that vary with distance, the only difference is that what you're integrating is not going to be a constant. And then you have rules and tools for being able to uh, evaluate those integrals. OK, so that's going to be it uh, for me, uh, guys. Uh, good luck, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.